Hi YouTube, Bria here from Edge Actuarial, and in today's video, I am doing something that really, really should be important to you because as an aspiring actuary, you need to know how insurance companies make money. It's something that might come up in interviews, so you definitely want to be prepared for that. And just in general, it's something you need to know as an actuary. If you don't understand how insurance companies make money, then you're probably not going to make it as an actuary because this is something that's really, really important to actuaries. They are highly responsible for making money in an insurance company. So you need to understand how this all works in order to ensure you're doing your job the best you can and also so that you can be a great in-demand actuarial candidate that really understands insurance. A couple things here before we get into that. Remember, we have a comment contest going on. You can win up to $250 towards your next actuarial exam. All you have to do is comment on any of my videos in January, videos that I release in January, that is. So go check those details out. I will leave a link to the details about the comment contest below. And on another note, if you want some more videos on actuarial topics to make sure that you really know what you're talking about if they come up in interviews or just when you're on the job or just in general so that you have a really good understanding of insurance, then I highly recommend you check out the Actuary Accelerator community. In there, I have tons of videos that explain things like reinsurance, deductibles, all types of life insurance. We talk about elimination periods and actuarial assumptions, plus tons of more things. So if you want to really develop your knowledge of actuarial terms and concepts, I highly recommend you check out the AAC, Actuary Accelerator Community. I will put a link to that down below. Now let's get into this video about how insurance companies make money. So every insurance company has two major buckets of things that they need to pay. One is claims, like you see here. So claims are going to be anything that the insurance company has to pay to its policyholder in terms of the benefits that the policyholder gets since they are they have an insurance policy with the company. So for example, this could be things like uh, repairs for a car. If, if it's an auto insurance company, then the company has to pay for the policyholder's car repairs if they get in an accident, for example. So that is one type of claim that the insurance company could have. If they are a life insurance company, that then this could be a death benefit. Or if they are a house insurance company, then maybe if a, a tree falls on someone's house, then they would have to pay for the repairs that are required to get the house back into good condition. So those are the types of claims that insurance companies have to pay and the claims are going to be different depending on what type of insurance company they are. The other big bucket that insurance companies have to pay are expenses. So as an insurance company, there are lots of different expenses that they need to take into consideration just in order to keep the insurance company running. So included in here are the salaries of all the actuaries. They are required. They are expenses um, because the insurance company has to continue to pay them in order to make sure that the company remains a company. <laughs> that includes things like all the computers and the laptops and all the technological equipment, technology, I guess, it, equipment that the insurance company needs to run. It includes all the paper, all that sort of stuff, and any other expenses, um, advertising, commissions, all those things need to be considered and those are all expenses that the insurance company has to pay. So there are really these two main things that insurance companies need to make sure they are able to pay. In this example, let's assume that we have expenses that are $40 and claims that are $80. I'm keeping it really simple here. In the real world, this might be 40 million and 80 million or something like that. But for the purposes of this, we're just gonna keep it really simple. Okay, so first off, the insurance company starts making money from their policyholders. So policyholders are going to have to pay a premium to the insurance company whenever they have a policy. So for example, if you have a car insurance policy, you're probably very familiar with a premium. You know that as a policyholder, you have to pay probably a monthly or maybe even weekly premium to the insurance company. So every person that has an insurance policy is going to have to pay premiums in some form or another 
Premiums can be paid annually. They could be paid monthly, weekly. It really depends on the type of insurance and the insurance company. Uh, sometimes you can pay a big lump sum up front and that pays for insurance for maybe a number of years or something like that. So premiums can come in many different forms, but they're often made regularly, like annually, weekly, monthly, that sort of thing. The policyholder is giving money in the form of premiums to the insurance company. In this example, let's say that the premium is $100 that the policyholder is giving the insurance company. Now is when it starts to get really interesting. The insurance company takes the money that they get from policyholders and they start to invest it into different investment options. So here we have bonds, shares, and mortgages. Those are just a few of the examples or types of investments that an uh, insurance company might invest in. But what they do is they purchase a bond or they purchase a share, or they purchase a mortgage, and that means they are investing their money into these types of investments and hoping for a return in the future. So typically, the value of these assets, or at least the hope, is that the value of these assets is going to increase over time. And then in the future, maybe the insurance company can sell these for a value or for more than what they paid for. They also, especially for bonds, there's also the possibility of getting coupon payments. And for shares, there's the possibility of getting dividend payments. Uh, those are usually regular payments that are made to the investors. And it's kind of like giving them an interest payment. So maybe every month or every quarter or every year, they get a, a payment from their investment that is kind of like interest. So for example, if they invested, let's say, $10,000 into a bond, it's possible that they might get $100 every year just for investing in there. It's kind of like an interest payment to the insurance company. So those are some of the ways that the insurance company is going to get money back from these investments. They're either hoping to get those dividend payments and the coupon payments or they're hoping to sell them in the future for a higher price and make money that way. The insurance company is going to invest money into these different types of investments. And in our example, we're going to take that $100 that the policyholder gave us and we're going to invest $40 into bonds, $20 into shares, and $40 into mortgages, totaling $100. Now, Many months or years down the road, money is going to start coming back to the insurance company. Like I said, the insurance company might choose to sell their bonds at a price higher than what they paid for, so they're going to make a profit there. Or they might be receiving dividends or coupons. Uh, dividends come from shares, bonds give coupon payments, so they might be getting those regular incomes uh, from those. So money is going to start coming back to the insurance company from these investments. So in our example here, let's say that, and but this does take a while. It could take many, many years to start seeing a return. It could be quarterly that dividend and coupon payments start coming through. So it's really about timing. The insurance company invests upfront and then over time they start to see money coming back to them that's higher than what they invested. In our example, we're going to have $50 coming back from our bonds, $30 coming back from our shares, $50 coming back from our mortgages, and that totals $130, which is more than we invested. We originally, if you remember, invested $100, and now over time, the insurance company is getting $130 back. Now we have $130, we have expenses of $40 and claims of $80. Um, and since our expenses and claims only total $120 and we have $130 in total, that means that the insurance company gets to claim a profit. They get $10 in profit. And that's really how an insurance company makes money. They invest their money. They make Hopefully, they plan to make more money than they invested. They get to pay off the expenses and the claims and then Hopefully they have more money than they started with that they can use as profit. 
I hope that, that video gave you a really good understanding of how insurance companies make money. Now remember, if you want to learn more about all the actuarial terms and concepts that you need to know as an aspiring actuary, I highly recommend checking out the Actuary Accelerator community. It has so many resources for you to make sure that you become an in-demand actuarial candidate that gets interviews and eventually gets hired in an entry-level actuarial position. I will leave all the details about that down below in the comments. I can't wait to see you in there. And down below in the comments, remember we have a comment contest. I'd love to know if you have any insurance policies right now. So for me, I have a car insurance policy. I just bought a house, so I have a house insurance policy now. I used to rent, so at that time I had renter's insurance. I also have disability insurance since I'm not employed by a company anymore. I have my own business. I had to get disability insurance and I also have health insurance and that is actually not something I pay for. Here in Canada we get, or actually in Ontario, we get OHIP which pays for all our medical expenses almost like visits to hospitals and doctors and stuff like that. So that is also a type of insurance that is funded by our government. So those are the types of insurance policies that I have. Let me down below if you have an insurance policy I'd love to hear what you have I think it's a really interesting concept and I hope you do too since you are an aspiring actuary I love hearing everything insurance related okay that is all for now I will see you in the next video bye